hoping that we won't get, I won't get bumped off. And it's been a bit slow. The internet has been a bit slow um, for me as well today, but let's hope. So it is one o'clock by my time. And so I would like to start the session by welcoming you colleagues um, to this session and introducing you, if you don't already know her, to Michelle Stewart McCoy, who just started last week at Settle as the educational technologist. And I certainly am very happy to have Michelle because it makes two of us who can undertake training for the faculties on the Mona campus and in particular for, for social sciences, which is a large faculty. And at this time, there is a great need for training. What we are doing now is looking at remote teaching and learning. This is where we're starting. Uh, today's session is a repeat of what was done on Monday. And tomorrow will be a repeat of what was done yesterday. Um, so far, we have had very good interaction in the sessions, and I hope that that will continue today and tomorrow. Tomorrow's session builds on what we do today. It was very, very clear yesterday because Michelle, you know, referred quite a bit to things that we, we said or discussed on um, the first day. So it's a building process. So we hope that you will be able to make it tomorrow as well. Michelle can say a few words now also before we start. Michelle, not hearing you. Hello, I'm not hearing you, Michelle. Uh, it seems as if Michelle has dropped out. Yes, it appears that Michelle has, has dropped out. Um, that being the, if that is the case, I will just continue. And when she gets back in, she can introduce herself. Michelle is not a stranger though to the Mona campus. Um, so some of you will be familiar with her. She's here now. Um, in Settle as the educational technologist. Um, so I will get started. Now, this is my um, first slide. People ask, you know, why are we talking about remote teaching and what's the difference between remote and online and, you know, things like that. Well, remote teaching is for us is done online, it's done online. However, it is not a permanent um, recommendation at all for how we teach. What it is, is that we were, and, and this of course does not apply only to us in Jamaica, but, or at UWI, what it is, is that we were forced to do this as a sort of, as a temporary thing in, a, in this emergency situation. And I think this um, description of it explains it well. However, it leads, it leads you to, to certain questions. Um, you know, this says that, and I've highlighted it, it says that once a crisis has abated, you'll return to, to the format that we had before. For us, I don't think that that is what it's going to be. Um, we were pretty much a face-to-face -face setup on the Mona campus for the most part. Some departments use more or less um, the synchronous and asynchronous technologies 
in delivery, but not in a structured and planned way. So that is going to be the way of the future for us on the Mona campus. You would have heard the principal and other, others talk quite a bit about going online and using blended learning strategies and so on, and it, or increasing that where that was not in place in departments, in courses, and so on. So this is where we'll be going. So this remote teaching we had to start to do uh, to complete last academic year, starting in the second part of, of semester two. And we will continue that in this semester. However, as we go along, you will find in this semester that between Michelle and I, we'll be working with you towards making additional changes for um, semester two. So remote teaching is a temporary shift for us. And the other thing I point out is that last semester, last academic year, students were understanding of the situation that all of us faced. They may be a little less patient this semester because they could think that we have had time to make additional changes. So we need to step up our game this semester. Any comments, colleagues? Can you still hear me? Oh, yes. Yes, we can. And there's okay. something in the chat, Charmaine. Oh, you're back, Michelle. Yes, I came back. I got, it looked as if the electricity chipped for a while. Went. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, I had asked you to introduce yourself, but you didn't hear. So I just, um, you know, introduced this slide, just talk, talked it through a bit. So perhaps you could introduce yourself. Oh, at this point? Yes, <laughs> even though even though I kind of introduced you, but just to say a few words yourself, so people okay. will hear your voice and so on. I just turned my camera on so people can see my face as well. So okay, this is good. Michelle Stewart McCoy. I, as Charmaine pointed out, I am in the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning, and I am the faculty educational developer. So I'll be assisting Charmaine, working quite closely actually with Charmaine in getting you not only online, but also comfortable so that you can fully engage your students. So we're here on standby. We will be initiating some sessions with you, but we will also be here to field any questions or queries that you have and to help you as best as possible. So it's a pleasure meeting you and we look forward to working with you in the near future. Thanks, Michelle. Okay, so we'll move on to, to the second slide. Michelle will um, monitor the chat, join the discussion as we go along. So you still have to plan for what you're doing this semester in the same way that you would have planned at the beginning of the semester for the courses you're going to, you, you would be delivering, you still have to plan for this. And what we want you to bear in mind is that although you'll be using the technology, the technology is, it remains a servant of what you do. The pedagogy is what is the most important thing still. It is that teaching that you do and the learning that students take away that is most important. The technology will serve you, it will help you, but by, I mean, by no means is the technology the, the key thing, the main thing. It is the vehicle through which you'll be teaching. And so 
as you plan for remote delivery, what, which you, you would have been doing already, um, what tools or combination of tools will you use to deliver your course? That's the, 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 one of the first things you'll have to think about. And our recommendation is that you not try to, to use too many tools. Use one synchronous tool and one asynchronous tool. Now, when I say a synchronous tool, I mean that you should use a tool that enables you to talk to students in real time. This is what you have been accustomed to. You've been accustomed to, to standing in front of a class and delivering and having students talk back to you in that physical setting. Asynchronous tools allows you to talk to your students in real time, although you are not physically in the same space, right? So that is, that is what I call a synchronous tool. And for us, a synchronous, the synchronous tools that have been in quite a bit of use are Blackboard Collaborate and Zoom. Now, we had this discussion on Monday, I believe it was, and I was told that the, the I, because I asked the question, what is it that the faculty supports as a synchronous tool? And I was told that that is Blackboard Collaborate. Blackboard allows you to see through, through the video and to use the audio to be heard and to get responses at the same time. And it allows you also to use the whiteboard and various other things, the whiteboard that you can write on. It also allows you to do web tours and that kind of thing. Michelle, you were right. going um, to speak? Natalie actually has a question. She's asking you to, again, just distinguish between synchronous and asynchronous. So I know that you're doing it, but if you could just repeat again, um, repeat it just for the okay. sake of, of those who... Good, good. So your synchronous tool is your tool, the, the, the thing that allows you to engage with your students in real time. So when I say in real time, it means that you speak, for example, and you get a response. You can get a response right away. You hear the voice or, and they hear your voice. You can, you're doing that in real time. The asynchronous tool, which is in our case, our VLE, which is Moodle, um, that tool is for discussions and so on where there is a lag in time in terms of responses and discussion and so on. It facilitates discussion and other types of interaction outside of a real-time setting. However, Moodle does have a chat feature in the same way that your WhatsApp or Skype or those kinds of tools enable you to chat and get a response right away. However, that's not, very, that's not used very much. I don't think anywhere nowadays uses that. In the very, very early days when we started doing um, blended and online teaching on the, in, in UWI. We used the chat feature in our VLE. It wasn't very um, efficient, and that has not, is not what we have um, you know, emphasized, but it's there. So Natalie, is that, is that better? Yes, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So the recommendation is that you go for one synchronous tool and for us that synchronous tool for teaching and learning is blackboard collaborate and one asynchronous tool which is the one that the university wide is supported and that is moodle called by various names on different campuses so on the mona campus it's been branded our vle in the open campus it's the learning exchange um, in St. Augustine, it's my e-learning, and I think at Cave Hill, it could also be my e-learning. I don't think that, um, I, I don't know for sure, but I don't know what Five Islands um, 
would call it at this point. I don't know. Um, but those are the two key tools that you will be using. Now, if you are proficient with others and they serve the pedagogy, you could use them. Now, they, but they, those would be minor, you know, in relation to the role of these two. Um, so, for example, you could use Skype in a pinch for, some, for something. You could use, um, I don't know, um, I, can't, I can't think of another name right now, another one, another of the tools. But there Let are me other help things. you. You yes, could probably you. use um, Google Meet um, or Google or, or Zoom. Those are also tools that could be used. And then there is, of course, the WhatsApp video. But as Charmaine said, we have to consider them as simply minor complementary tools, not the official tools. Right. Thank you, Michelle. And that is a key thing, that those are not official tools. They are not, the institution is not supporting them so for teaching and learning. So therefore, you have to be judicious and careful in how you use them. We don't want to attract any sort of legal issues, for example. So, you know, I wouldn't recommend that anybody accepts assignments in any, anything else outside of our VLE, right? That is where, that's what's provided by the institution. So use the tools that the institution has provided, right? Right, so my next slide, in my next slide, I was asking, you know, what tools you are comfortable with and so on. So we know that Blackboard is what is supported as a synchronous tool. And I'm pointing out here that Skype, I know it's Skype, it's very common to use Skype, to jump on Skype, and, you know, to have a quick discussion with somebody, to share a screen, those kinds of, to look at, at, at where somebody is with their work and that kind of thing. But it is not, provided by the institution. It is people's personal accounts. So we have to be careful. We cannot um, you know, insist that anybody use Skype. Um, and so I had covered number point two also, what the tool is that the faculty or the department recommends. Um, and it is Blackboard Collaborate. So build your, your synchronous teaching around that tool. However, I know that you would have experienced this last semester. And if you perhaps, if you are like me, you experience this almost every day, the frustration of the bandwidth issues. Um, OK. Oh. Um, I hope you're still. I'm still on. Um, am I still on? Still on, yes. Jamie. Still yeah, on. You're okay. still on. You're still on. Ooh. Wow. Um, yes, I, I experience bandwidth issues myself. And I know that it is also a, a challenge for students right across um, and for some of you as well. So while planning to use your synchronous tools and so on, you still need to bear the bandwidth and other technology related challenges in mind. And we will talk about how you, um, you know, work around things like that. One way is to use the asynchronous technology. In fact, that's a very good way, right? So that whatever you do um, on Blackboard, for example, you record it and make the, avail the recording available on your course page. I start, I, this session is being recorded, for example, so that if people miss it, or if you want to review, you can go back and have a look at it. The, it's not in a, um, an OVLE space, but the faculty certainly will tell you where it is. Um, so you can use your asynchronous tools, technology tools where possible. You post your presentations there, recordings, and other things, notes, lectures, activities, podcasts, you post them there. Post summaries 
of videos and, and podcasts if, if it is possible. There are videos and podcasts that come with summaries sometimes. So, you know, you don't have to start from scratch with that. So make use of, you know, little tips and, and, and so on like that as you use your synchronous um, tool, your Blackboard Collaborate. Now, having decided, you know, that, okay, yes, I am going to offer, have some synchronous sessions. I'm not going to use our VLE only. You have to remote to plan for, for, you, you, for this. You have to continue your planning. So you review your course. What are the goals of the course? I mean, think about it again for the umpteenth time, you know, but what are the goals of the course? What do you really want the activities and the experiences and the assessments to achieve? What is it that's key for students to take away from the course? For example, is it only by conducting an interview that students can achieve a particular objective? Or is it only by conducting a face-to-face -face interview that they can achieve the objective? Can it work if they interview the person online virtually? Can that work with the appropriate um, you know, criteria and instructions and so on for conducting an interview virtually? Think about things like that because you will find that sometimes you can't translate exactly what you were doing face-to-face -face into online. And sometimes you shouldn't even try to do that, right? Because the online environment offers you quite a bit more, actually, that you can introduce students to. And that will take them into the world of, 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 of work in terms of the ways in which they do things and the skills that they take away. Could the goal be achieved using a different task or different tasks? And what topics are better taught in a real-time session? So what is, what, there are some things perhaps in math and so on, which you want to show on the board. You want to show your, the students how you work it out. And there are many different ways of doing that online. Some of it using the whiteboard in, um, in Blackboard, for example, to work out a problem, for example, so that students can see what you're doing, they can question you, and you can explain. So where, where something is troublesome, where a topic is troublesome, a concept is troublesome, and so on, you may consider that that is a key thing for you to teach in a real-time session. So, that is one way of using the synchronous tool. Some people prefer to see the students, you know, virtually every week. They feel that that presence is, is good. If you want to set it up that way and use a session, have one session in the same way that you would have had a face-to-face -face lecture um, every week, well, you're free to do that also. However, that's not absolutely essential. That's not mandated at this point. If there must be a group task, discuss this with the students from the very beginning during your orientation to the course. Let them know early that they will have to decide how they meet virtually in this time when you know we are not being encouraged to be physically close to one another they have to arrange how they meet and they have to know work out how they are going to do the work you will have to help them here i believe because this would not be a common way to them for doing that so it would be good for you to to you know, work with them in that first session to work through what is going to be required. And I know you would have been introduced to the flipped classroom, 
and using active learning strategies. I've seen the flyers from Settle over the years where Settle has you know, promoted this and this has been taught by Settle as well. So consider using the, the flipped classroom if you're not already doing it. And if you are doing it face-to-face, -face, consider how you can translate a flipped classroom into your online, into teaching online, right? If you want, Michelle and I are here, we can help you through working it through, right? We can help you to work through how you get, how you flip the classroom into, in the online setting. And make sure whatever you do to build in opportunities for engagement and interaction, student to student or peer to peer, uh, student to lecturer and student to the content that you are, you want them to take away from the course. Any queries there? Any, uh, any um, comments? Um, Velivi or Velivi is asking if you could explain a little bit about the flipped classroom. Do you want me okay, to take Vanda. it? Okay, yes. Vanda. Yes, Michelle, thank you. <laughs> okay, in, in very simple terms, the flipped classroom is simply a reversal of what usually happens when we, we we're in that setting. So under, under normal circumstances, normal here referring to the face-to-face -face classes that we would have, we would give the students information, whether by a lecture or to, to, to tutorials, we'd give them information. And then for the most part, we would ask them to do activities outside of that classroom setting. So they get homework, they get assignments, they get tasks, which they do outside of the classroom. And then when they come back, you go through and then you move on to lectures again. The flipped classroom is simply turning it around. So outside of the classroom, they get the resources. So they get the information, the resources, the notes. They go through with strategic guidance from you and then when they come to class, class is where the activities take place. So this is where you flesh things out with them. You have them working out cases and scenarios and, and, and just showing how much they have understood from what you have given. So it's just a flip. It is literally a flip, a reversal of what usually happens. So they get videos and resources outside the class and then in class, you have the engagement task and the activities and the interaction. So that's all it is in simple terms. Okay, they, they, they know the topic because of the course outline. They find the material. On no, their... they, don't, they don't necessarily find. We caution you to, uh, against just telling them, go find the material. So you still say to them, here um, are the videos that I want you to watch. Here is the uh -huh. material I want you to read, go mm -hmm. through. So instead of you doing that in class, they do this outside of the class. When they come to class now, you either carry out a debate, you have a discussion, you have a, a problem for them to solve, which is based on what they would have gathered from outside. You play a game with them. If you're into that sort of thing, you give them a quiz. So the activities are largely conducted in the class with the, with the assumption because you want to ensure that they have done that but not everybody's going to, to to actually do the reading or go through the resources mm -hmm. but you would have to ensure that you put things in place to, to, to let them know that you have to do the reading have to go through the videos have to do the resources in order to participate in the classes when you come okay and, and you right. realize so that with remote learning with the remote teaching that is going to come in play a lot because you won't necessarily be using the limited time that you have with them for them to be going through the content right so it could almost be um for want of a better word you're saying to them okay teach me what you learned then exactly that's a nice so way to look at it you 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 conduct the class then and we are well you the lecturer me vanda the lecturer I'm a student. Teach me what you know. Well, it, it, I suppose so, it depends on how you set it up, Vanda. Yes, yes, yes. Right. 
Right. Because you don't want to necessarily use the session to just be an information passing session. So you would have to ensure that you set up activities that would have them fully engaged, showing that they have learned. So you could pose a short scenario and, and for instance, based on what you read on topic X, this is the issue. How would you deal with it? Or there something like that. Very uh, good. Thank you. No problem. Right. Vanda, so it's also possible that you, you know, this is, this is good for groups as well. Um, right. That they, you set whatever it is, the case, you know, you give the questions that, for example, and maybe not even all of the questions, or sometimes you leave it open for them to add, you know, to it as they right. read and so on, based on the insights that they, they are getting. And they come to class and it's a presentation. It could right, be a group right. presentation with each person having a role, you know, in that group to okay. deliver. So, you know, it, it allows you to do these kinds of things. You could, it could also be that they come um, and they you. that won't cause you health problems. Yes, we have health insurance, but we know what the cost of, 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 of good health is. Make students aware of the times that you are available and stick to those times. So if your consultation time is one to two, between one and two or one and three, let students know that, post that on the course page, post that on the course outline, Post that wherever else you need to post it. Let them know and stick to those times. It, I know that there can be emergencies. There can be situ students can have situations when they need to contact you and let you know something outside of this. But please try to emphasize that these are your office hours and it is only emergencies and I mean an emergency they can see an emergency in in different ways eh? so try and, and and emphasize your the times when you are available so you set your virtual office hours using whatever the tools are um, I would recommend blackboard whether you record or not I would say it's up to you in your if you were having your consult your physical consultations it is unlikely that you would be using blackboard perhaps you wouldn't want to record however if there are key topics and so on that keep coming up that need to be addressed then perhaps you need to make a note of it and address it outside of you, you know in the in the wider group online so that you know, all students would be aware of what that issue was and what the resolution could be. You could also meet with small groups, right, about specific topics if your classes are large. So if students are having a difficulty with a particular topic, then try to meet them in a, in a small group to deal with that topic. And if you were using Zoom, I would say use the, the waiting room feature, but you're not using Zoom, you'll be using Blackboard. You can use the breakout rooms in a similar way to, to schedule consultations. This is what I'm saying. So you can use it to schedule your consultations and set the amount of time that you will be using or devoting to each student. Of course, that will depend on the topic that you are addressing or that the student has come with it could be 15 minutes 
it could take more. But bear time in mind is what I'm saying. That's my main point. Bear time in mind for your own sake. Let me see what's here um, in the chat. Any, any questions? Anybody wants to let me hear their voice? Is Michelle back? I'm not sure if Michelle is back. Okay. Um, so no questions? Okay. For large classes. For you, what's a large class? Can somebody tell me, please, what's a large class for you? I'm waiting. I'm going to be like one of the, 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 the songs in the whalers. No, I'm still waiting. Oh, Marie, 120. Oh, ho. Christina, large class for you is 50. Does anybody have more than Marie's 120? Well, it, it depends for me if it's undergraduate or graduate. For undergraduate class, um, 20 is big, well, 100. But for a graduate class, it's too much if it's more than 25. Okay. And Garth is saying that the faculty defines it as a class of 100 or more. So, so Garth, by that definition, it could go up, up to 500. You don't want to talk, Garth? Oh, I was preserving the uh, bandwidth. Oh, okay. 1,500 students for some courses. Okay. For and introductory what, sociology, there's 1,500 students. Okay, and the way, and the, that's broken into different streams, I believe. Not anymore. It's all okay. taught as one session now because of the you can do it asynchronously and then okay. the tutorials would be handled synchronously at the smaller um, numbers of students okay good right so that's that's what you think of that's what large is now i know that for example in humanities large doesn't get up to that kind of number so for, for large classes, um, based on what Garth said, the small group strategy is in use in tutorials. So, but you can use, you know, additional group strategies for teaching outside of just having a group as a, as a tutorial group, having 25 in a tutorial group or whatever it is, you can break down into smaller groups, right? And use the flipped classroom strategies, for example. You can provide smaller assignments and activities in In sociology, psychology, oh, okay. and social work, there's a psychology representative, a sociology representative, and a anthropology representative. Okay. Okay. And within each, each class, there's a rep. Okay. So you can, you can, the class rep could be a person through whom you communicate, um, but that can't be the only means. So for example, you would post something on our VLE, um, you know, about whatever it is. Put, you know, make sure though that any of any kinds of notices are put in a put in the same kind of place. And we'll eventually go through that when you will see what Michelle does tomorrow. 
in terms of st structuring the, the um, spaces, the blocks, and, and the sections in the, on your course page. Um, so, so that, for example, if it is, you know, notices, whatever, yes, there's the announcements section, um, and there's a section for, new, for, for news and so on, I believe. Um, but if you're putting up a document for information purposes, you know, updates, that kind of thing, make sure that you place them in one area so that they know where to look for it. Sometimes you, you have to make things available in different formats as well. Could be text, could be audio. Um, as I said to people, you know, if you, I don't, I, I, I don't think it would be an issue if you feel that you can DJ something, a message, and that it would reach your students. I mean, I don't think there's any harm in that. Um, it's also important at this time, I think, to communicate that we are all in this difficult and uncertain period because I think sometimes students believe that lecturers are unfeeling and you know you don't have the same experiences that they do and and so on so you know this is why you're being hard and particularly difficult I think it it, it, it would be a good idea to let students understand that you too are in the in this space and in this in this thing you know so um, I, I'd have a draft of a letter to students that um, another, another department in another faculty had asked for. And if you like, I can share that. You can adjust it however you please. Um, add to it, subtract from it. But if it would give you a good place to start if you want to, to use that route. You could also take the content off, off the letter, out of the letter format, and use a different format, whether it be PowerPoint or whatever it is, however you want to do it. Audio or audio plus a document that you put on the course page. Because I, I am recommending things like that because um, where students have bandwidth issues, it is important to consider you know, alternative ways of getting information to them, where they have data and, um, you know, financial issues. It's also important. It could be that it's better for a student to be able to go online into our VLE, look around, take, download whatever you have posted, download it, and then read it offline. For example, that, that, that reduces the amount of, 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 of um, data that they use. It could also be that they are only able to go to a certain place, you know, like whether a, an internet cafe or whatever it is, at a certain, at six in the evening, I don't know, or, or something like that to download. Or so they may not be able to attend a, a class, a synchronous session at a particular time. The recording is important for such a student as well. So you make it available as soon as it, it, it's available. And generally, um, it, the recordings come through fairly quickly so that you can post them on the course page. Use the announcements forum and get students to understand or to see that you, this is what, where I am putting these things. You need to check these places once a week, for example, at the very least, to see what I expect for this week. And where it is possible, post directly on the, on the page. Michelle po pointed out um, the ways of using blocks on the course page, right? Um, I say post directly on the page, and I don't mean posting a long, you know, epistles and, and several paragraphs on that course main page. You don't want to do that, right? That's not really the best practice for that, for that course main page. But certainly, you know, a brief thing to say, um, please, this is where what we're, we'll be doing this week.
Good afternoon. Yes, I am here. Good afternoon, ma'am. <laughs> you you are saying? Yes, I'm saying. Could you tell us what you were were saying about the 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 how the reps work in your course? Okay, sure, not a problem. Just quickly, because sometimes I well, for me, large is now fifty. I try to ensure that I cover all bases. So I use OUR really as long as I have access. I actually also do a Google Drive and, and then I use my point persons, which would be my class reps and my group leaders. So I'm hoping that by looking at the different avenues, I'll be able to cover information reaching to all my persons. That's it. Okay, good. Good. Does anybody have any other suggestions? Anything you have used that works? That's different. One Nothing? thing I mean, may, may I just say one other thing? Is sure, that sure. Even though I use the class reps and the group leaders, they have to get back to me just so to confirm that their individual group members have received the information. So that feedback loop must be there. Thank you very much for that, Christine. That is important. It can't be that you just, um, you know, you send the information out and you don't know whether it's received or not. So that is very important to close that loop. So remember that, colleagues. Now, while you're delivering, um, some things to bear in mind as good practice. I, I, I like to outline the rules. Um, so, for example, uh, Keisha in the dean's office will know that um, in the past, I have you would have entered this, this meeting room and you would have been greeted by a notice on the screen that welcomes you and that you know encourages you to abide by the rules raise your hand turn off the mic or i would have had the mic you know and so on set to off on entry if possible i say that because if when you're using blackboard or zoom or any of of those tools it can be very very distracting and it can take a lot of time for people to settle down and for things to settle down. So I normally start, like to go in early and allow people to be able to go in, say 15 minutes beforehand, students that is, and to say to them when they come in, please check your, your audio, please check and make sure that everything is working before we start so that we try to minimize the amount of time you take out of the teaching time to you know, settle things down or to call to people and remind them of this and that. Yes, you're going to have to remind them if they are new to it, right? But let's hope that as the semester goes along, if you keep on, if you remind them over say two or three weeks, that after that it, 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 will, be, it will minimize the need to to you know stop so much to attend to non-teaching matters make use of the audio as much as possible for synchronous sessions again back to the bandwidth issues um you know if you like you show your face at the beginning if you want i know some people some some um lecturers are concerned that students don't um, you know, it could, they, they turn the, 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 the video off and, you, and then they are, you know, doing different things um, so according to, to, to one, to somebody in one group. Um, you know, the video was off and the student was cooking and this and that and the other. Um, I, I don't know if, I, I am not teaching at this point, I'm not teaching. Um, if the student wants to cook, you know, turn the video off and cook, that's his or her. For me, I wouldn't worry myself about that. My concern is that when the assignments are set or if the student has a presentation to do, he or she knows what's to be done and does it. Um, that is where, I, that's what 
how I would look at it. However, um, not everyone will look at it in that way. However, what you can do about things like that is let students know, um, you know, that you will be calling upon them. You will be calling random, randomly upon someone to respond to something, right? So that, you know, you want them to pay attention. Um, but bearing in mind the, the bandwidth issues, we can't afford to, to have video of everybody all the time in the session. If they're going to be presenting, if they're going to be speaking, they can turn the video on to show the face and turn it off. That is what I would suggest. What do you feel about that? Is that something workable for you? Colleagues? Um, Charmaine? Yes. Natalie. Um, Hi, Natalie. How do you deal with disruption? So say, for example, in our session today, had the electricity gone and interrupted the session, I, I would say, permanently rather than temporarily. Um, what would you do to make up for that last time? OK, well, there it is. That's exactly what it is, Natalie. We'd have to make up for it. Um, the, as I said, I have been recording. So the parts that I have been recording would have been saved. Um, we'd have, you'd have to set another time to make up for it. Um, and what's been recorded, you would post on the, the, the um, our VLE. This is also a, a presentation that I'm using. So I would, have, would post this also. Those are the things I would do. Because I mean, this is this is this is going to be with us. The loss of um, electricity wherever you are. Michelle, are you back? I just came back. Okay, so light is back there. Current is back. Yes, and the internet okay. just chipped in. So okay, good. We're See, back. there you go. There we go. Um, use the features of the technology for writing. Um, you are able to write on the blackboard, on the, the, the whiteboard, in, on, um, in Blackboard Collaborate. Use it in, in, in classes, right? Um, and as I said, you are able to do web tours to look at things, depending on, on of course, on what your, your subject area is. Um, for example, if it were a hotel related course, custom, for example, to take students to, you know, see various things in a hotel. Mind you, I don't know if, if, if this is how it works. Eh? I don't know. I'm just saying that it is possible to find things online, find videos and so on that you can look at, students could look at with you, critique what's there and you, you get the same kind of, of um, result as you would be seeking from a face-to-face -face visit in as much as it's possible. I don't know what else you may have been looking for, you know, face-to-face, -face, but I feel sure that you could find enough resources to satisfy those kinds of needs. And in time, in due, to, in due course, you can, you know, develop your own resources to do things like that. Um, yes, Shandy. Michelle. Yes. So Rashley has, has noted that we could also utilize the, our phones mobile in response to the question that, that Natalie asked. So she was pointing out that we could use a mobile phone as a hotspot um, and we could also use the audio feature of PowerPoints, notes and post that to the RVLE if the session ends. Um, prematurely. I think these are two very good points, but in terms of the mobile phone, sometimes the data that you have is very un, un, unreliable because I was yes. trying to connect just now, and even though it's postpaid, I wasn't, I wasn't getting through. So it's an option. 
But then if mm -hmm. that doesn't work, there is the posting of the notes or the posting of the, the audio file that would be useful. Thank you very much, Rachelle. Okay, thanks. Once, when, when, um, after, when students make presentation, remember to wrap up by giving feedback. Um, I've seen sessions end without this kind of wrap up. And so students leave so, with some kind of uncertainty. Um, sometimes the uncertainty, uncertainty can be deliberate on your part. You want that deliberate uncertainty. If that is not what you want, however, remember to wrap up. Take, your, take notes as the presentations are going on, if it is that students are doing presentations, and make sure that you wrap up, right? Don't, don't, it's, a, it's, it's very important. If you don't intend not to wrap up. In terms of using the asynchronous technology, again, we are back to, the, to, to our VLE now. Maximize as you, you know, make as much use of the discussion forums as possible for questions, for responses, for, for getting students to discuss things, make as much use of it as possible. And I know that it's, it's, if you have large groups and so on, it's not easy to give feedback in those ways to individuals. If you have small groups, it's much easier. Um, you know, 20, 25, it's easier. But even then, I would recommend that you develop your strategies for giving feedback. Give group feedback as much as is possible. So what you would do, what I'd recommend, is that you read through the students' postings. Go through the postings note what you, you, you know, the key things, the important things, the things that were well understood, the things that were not so well understood, and come up with a posting that addresses the issues, the challenges, the good points that you noticed in, in all the postings. You can refer students to look at looking at another student's posting, for example. Um, you know, Stephen answered this question very well. Stephen, Stephen handled this very well. Or Stephen handled this aspect of, of, of the question very well. Look at Stephen's posting. Jennifer spoke very well to this. Look at her posting. I found that, you know, you could have looked at, students could have, looked more at this particular aspect, those kinds of things, right? Draw, draw attention to peer responses where, where it is possible. You, you make that posting. That does not mean that you will never respond to an individual, but certainly it should minimize, you know, the amount of time you spend responding one-to-one. -one. And encourage students to interact with their peers Right? Encourage them to answer, you know, to feel free to give their, 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 their views, of course, in respectful ways. Um, somebody is cooking, somebody is eating. I hear, could you please um, mute the mic? Um, so encourage students to interact with their peers. Right? This is what, what the, 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 this technology makes it, you know, much, much easier to do. And as we said before, post recordings of synchronous sessions on the course page, PowerPoints or other presentations. In terms of assignments, right, that you're going to grade, make sure that those assignments are accepted through our VLE for accountability reasons. Um, students have to register and get clearance you know, financial clearance of some sort before they come into or, or you know, to, as, a, as a precursor to coming into courses. And those are all towards accountability. Accept assignments through our VLE 
in the drop in the drop box or whatever you you want to call it that is a legal matter i mean if students went into the office to hand in assignments they would get a receipt that kind of thing if they submit in our vle um, then there is a record of the submission and that is important so make sure to abide by the rules i am not encouraging anyone to accept um, assignments by email and i don't think the faculty is encouraging that either garth can you say garth are you there yes i'm there the faculty does not encourage it to be done by um, email they want it done through um or vle okay thank you and pass through um turn it in okay good good Thank you very much, Garth. Now we're looking at here a little bit at accessibility and I, um, this brought up quite a bit of discussion on Monday. I don't know um, what your experiences are and, and so on. Now, um, access to the technology is, provided by when you have you know data or when you have the, 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 the you know the, the means to access the technology when you're properly registered and so on um, for students with learning and other challenges there are things that we can recommend to students that that students do um, the discussion we had on monday brought up you know what what the institution provides for students with this various kinds of disability um so we will look at that after this point here just a so, minute Charmaine. yes yes Jermaine has a question go ahead Jermaine. yes good uh, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I wanted to raise a point. Re something you said just now about um, assessment and uh, routing ass assessments through all your really. I've had, well, I've had an issue, especially last semester when I was teaching the, the day school because some of my assessments were grouped assignments and um, the challenge was that some of the students didn't have consistent access to internet that would enable them to properly make a presentation as a group so what i opted to do instead was to utilize another instructional tool something called voice thread which allowed the students to prepare the powerpoint to upload it beforehand and then record their parts, so to speak, on the respective mm. slides and then send me the link. Afterwards, that link was uploaded on, on OURVLE for the rest of the class to watch and comment. Uh, this um, strategy allowed greater inclu inclusion for some students that, that really and truly do have the access, like I said, um, to internet sometimes during our class times. And then some students that might have performance anxiety presenting over an online um, forum. So mm -hmm. I, I wanted to know what, what is the flexibility going forward in my case and, and maybe other, other, my other colleagues <clears throat> may have similar cases as well where we can use other instructional tools to support the, the, the use of OURVLE and not rely solely on OURVLE to collect assessments. Okay, um, thanks for, for raising your, your own example. I'm, I'm happy to hear your example. 
we had pointed out at the beginning that what the institution supports is two things, Blackboard and OVLE. However, it does not mean that you can't use other things to support your teaching. Um, but notice that you said that the, the eventually the link was posted in our VLE, right? So that is what is key, that eventually it ended up in our VLE. So I think that was a, a good way of getting around the, the, the challenge. Um, sometimes, as you know, if, if they work offline and you can determine who does what, who was, you know, the part that each person in the group played in the, in the task, that is good. Um, when it comes to grading, right, they do whatever they do offline and then post it there you are able to grade and if you are grading for peer um, feedback then as you said once it was posted in our VLE you were able to to you know others were able to see it so that that was a good way of getting around it and indicated that on an earlier slide that you you know yes you can use other tools once you are but just bear in mind that the institution supports two of them okay um is that is that so um, a, a reasonable response jeremy yeah man yeah man reasonable i just want to clarify um a final thought that we're not necessarily tied to synchronous assessment but we have the the flexibility to to also offer asynchronous assessment as long as it still ties or you are really into the fold somehow yes okay. that's that's pretty much the backbone of okay. what you what that that um, the institution supports because even notice that blackboard is embedded within that you see that's where you pick up you you get the blackboard collaborate it's put right there inside of our VLE so that that indicates to you and that's right across the university not only in in Jamaica it's on the other campuses it's that way as well Michelle, you posted this. You 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 um you put this on the screen, Michelle. No, no, I didn't. I thought you did. No, somebody else did. I don't know who. <laughs> um, no, I didn't actually. <laughs> I don't Interesting. Know if, I don't can know you if click it was it? Um, one of the text persons. But can you click? Very interesting. I'm going to. Oh, because I can't. So yes, it, it I looks did. as if it came but up. But I on didn't your screen. I didn't um put it up. Yes, <laughs> I did. Yes, but I, I don't know who is listening to me or who did it. You know, but, 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 we were talking about students with Lee. I had a discussion with, with another group. And one of the lecturers said that it was not until the semester started that, um, you know, and she did, she was, she was not aware, two students with, um, with hearing impairment appeared in of it beforehand, and the students themselves were also very upset. I tried to find out um, between Monday and today, um, you know, what the arrangements are for students with, with different kinds of, of, of challenges, whether it be hearing, whether it be vis visual because of, you know, something to do with their hand, whether it be, you know, other kinds of, of, of learning challenges, dyslexia and so on. Um, we know, I guess, everybody is aware of the Office of Special Student Services. However, what is their role and 
how will that um, work in, in the online environment, in this virtual environment? I tried to, to find out, as I said, and um, what I, I learned is that the students who make the institution aware that they have challenges, um, the, the office gets that information from admissions and the, the all kinds of support for such students. Um, I think that's where they sit the exams physically. Um, you know, they provide readers, they provide people who will write for students, those kinds of things, what's provided. You now, sometimes, however, uh, somebody pointed out that some students do not feel comfortable, a very a visible um, impairment, and they don't feel comfortable drawing that kind of attention to themselves. So they don't say anything. And then you discover, you know, somewhere along the line that there are these challenges. What I was also told, which I have not um, experimented with or checked, is that um, the Office of Special Student Services asked MITS to enable the closed captioning feature in um, our VLE. But as I said, I don't know if, it, if it's been done. I have not checked. I have not been able to check. But along the way, you, we, can encourage, you, we are encouraged to use larger text where it's possible. So if you're providing PowerPoint presentations, um, if you're providing just you know, a Word, Word document saved as a PDF or whatever, try to use larger text. Um, make sure to, to stay away from colors that are hard to read. And for students who have visual impairments and so on, you, you know, encourage zooming the, 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 the web pages and so on. No, you don't say that necessarily to a student, but you this way, couch it in a nice way, put that information on the course page, you know? And where possible, use images. Provide text for audio files and, and so on, right? So there are things we can do. No, but we have to look more closely at home, and perhaps this will be a separate session, and, uh, you know, when we look more closely at what to do. For, perhaps it would have to be a more targeted session. Um, um, colleagues who have various kinds of challenges, we work, you know, more closely with them in a more targeted way. I don't know. Unless it is, others it is are, that we you know, can... keen to come along as well, right? Consider and work through. Any queries? Any any um, comments? Any experiences to share, colleagues? It's good to share your experiences. Not in the chat, so maybe persons want to talk about it. Okay. All right. And we come back to this, managing yourself. And again, I can't emphasize enough as part of best practice that this is important. We are still in a lot of a period of great uncertainty and, you know, anxiety and some things will cause us stress um, or to feel, you know, stress. So we have to manage ourselves. The time we spend before in front of the screen, that affects us in, in various ways. It affects the eyes, it affects the brain, it affects concentration on the whole body. Um, I, I remember when this whole period just started, I didn't realize at first how much time I was 
spending in one place in, in, in my house, you know, in the same space every day, right through the day. And eventually it, it hit me that, you know, the walls do something about it, you know, and sort of speak to myself and, you know, decide what I was going to do. Um, it, it affects us in different ways and we have to find ways of dealing with it and of coping. Again, know when you will be available to students and let them know. And set a maximum time for your, your, your synchronous sessions, right? Is that, will that be three hours? Will that be two hours? Will that be two and a half hours? Two and a half if you include the time or two hours and 15 minutes if you include the time that you students will need and you will need for settling down, the set settling down period. And how much time for student presentations? If you have five groups, you can't take five groups in, 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 in um, two hours in any meaningful way. You will not have given each one time, enough time, and you would not have given each enough time for taking feedback and for us fluidity of each day. Colleagues, that is what I, I would recommend to you. And that's my last slide. And I thank you for your attention. And we invite questions and comments and suggestions as to where we go from here. Now, tomorrow, however, what we will be doing is, and Michelle will lead on that tomorrow, is looking at our VLE. We had hoped to reach to get um, quite a ways with Get in, getting into Blackboard as well. That did not work yesterday for us because there were so many questions and um, you know, as to how to, to, you can use various tools for teaching that are, uh, uh, sorry, of our VLE. So, you know, we didn't get to Blackboard. That will have to be a totally separate section session but what we are doing is actually show, um, showing and here again for tomorrow we are tutors and to you know do what Michelle was 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 showing right and to ask questions I think people did it I, I, I can't say everyone did um, but enough people did it and raised questions as to the ways in which the tools work, the, 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 the different parts of um, our VLE work. So, um, you know, that's what the plan is for tomorrow. So make sure that you turn out and participate. Um, comments, queries, Michelle? Uh, I, I just wanted to add, uh, colleagues, we realize that the system um, has been a bit slow. So if you know anybody who wants to come, please uh, just circulate the information to them as soon as it comes out to you. We ask you to just let them know that the session is going to be there. And Mr. Facey from um, CTL just posted a form that we would love for you to, to complete. It may be a bit late for us today, but we still want you to do so because it helps us to get a better feel of where you are and we can collect some basic data. So the Zoom link for tomorrow, let me just post it here um, so that you can have access, but still look out for the flyer that will come from your respective unit or, or from the pipeline. So you can just use that to log in tomorrow, pass it on to your colleagues if you know colleagues who want to be there and come prepared to, to, to share, as Charmaine said, if you have a course, you can open it up so that we can show and do. So it's not just a talking session, it's going to be a practical hands-on session. And interestingly enough, Charmaine. No, we don't want it to be just talking. No, we don't want it to be just talking at all. And uh, ways in which they used um, 
the, 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 the various things that are available in our VLE. Um, some people, you know, remarked that they did not know, they were not aware at all of, you know, just the whole range of possibilities that were available through there. So, and use these tools to your, to, 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 to your benefit and to the benefit of your students. Any, any comments, quiet group? This has been a very quiet group. Very few yeah, talkers um, here. Charmin, the session tomorrow is 9 o'clock, 9 a.m.? Yes, tomorrow's session is at 9. Um, and it's, it's, it's a three-hour session. Okay. Right, it's three hours. Yeah. Are we going to so go through Blackboard? Prepared, Kevin. We're going to go through Blackboard? Not for tomorrow's session. It, we're trying to make it a repeat of what we did before. And we found out on, on Tuesday that the Blackboard will have to be a standalone session. So Charmaine and I will be getting together to just have a little discussion of how best we can and how quickly we can arrange that for you. Okay, great. Kevin. That, that you should not come tomorrow because there's yes. a lot that you will no learn about our belly and what's available in our belly. Trust us. Yeah, man, I show up. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, cool. Any other comments, questions, colleagues? Um, good afternoon. I'm checking. Will Just the... know that we're here to support you over the semester. Please go ahead, Galaxy. Yes. <laughs> I always I had prefer to know people's a... names, you know. I tried putting in my name. And <laughs> Who is that? Story. This is Camille Daly from Sociology, Psychology, and Social Work. I was just confirming will there be any access to a recording okay. for, for tomorrow because I am having a clash yes. I may not be able to yes okay. there will be okay but okay you know, there's nothing like seeing for yourself but there will be yes I know I know I, I the, the times your faculty have, have, will have, have, pro provide that Okay, excellent. Yeah, no, because then sometimes there's a clash yes, either with the class. That was unfortunate why I missed the first one. So basically, yes. And then I have, I just wanted to make certain because I really, really, really wanted to attend, but I doubt I can attend for the whole three hours. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. No other comments or queries? Why didn't privately meet Michelle, my if, if there are no... Uh, it, there's, I'm looking, but questions. I'm not, I'm not seeing anything else in the chat. Um, there are a number of big ups okay. and thank yous. So a number of persons have said this was very good. Um, so I'm not seeing any questions or any additional information in the chat. That we didn't address. Okay. Right. Um, okay. All right. Yes. Okay. All right, colleagues, if, if there are no other questions or comments, then we will bid you a good afternoon. I'll stop sharing the screen and we will bid you a good afternoon. Um, it is amazing how clear the, the, the sky is now and the sun is shining once again. So I guess we can look forward to sunshine and blue skies, um, you know, at some point beyond the COVID. So, exactly. you know, Mm -hmm. All right, guys, see you tomorrow. Okay. All right, colleagues, so good afternoon.